Greetings, humans. Spinning Mantis here with the next episode of Bubblehead Blues and Bullets. Thanks so much for joining me. In this series, we're also making alternate choices from our Let's Play with Squirt Reynolds. So, this isn't going to be a very long episode. But let's get to it. This is the last main scene. We're going down the docks to meet someone with the Russian name. And uh, probably it's very big head. So coming up, there's kind of like a little racist segment. Um, I am going to choose to uh, not go along with the racism Everything this time. Work out fine, Make a different choice. You sure it's here? Relax. It's just a little further. Just follow me. I think we're probably gonna have to fight. This plan is suicidal. We're gonna die. I don't think so. I don't think so. And may I ask why? It's not the first time I've done a job like this. And I never was any good at getting killed. There's a first time for everything, my friend. Milton, if you go on contradicting me, you're not going to get into your role. Don't forget, while we're here, you're supposed to be at my beck and call. While we're here? Yeah, that's not cool. Hear that? Not bad. <laughs> a white boy who likes the blues. What's next? You gonna let the black man vote? <laughs> I wonder <clears throat> if in this uh, alternate reality, obviously things are a lot different. If black people actually can't vote, it's uh, very interesting to see if it's different. This is supposed to be like the 50s. Um, in our reality, black folks got the vote um, pretty soon after the emancipation, and then it was suppressed for many years, uh, especially in the South. But, um, you know, pretty soon after emancipation, um, the Constitution was amended to allow all black folks the vote. But of course, uh, I was abused for many years. A lot of people tried to get them not to vote, etc., by doing bad things. Wonder if that's just a little eye candy or I don't know, Saint Helena. It's gonna come back into it. Okie dokie. Let's look at these two disgusting giant headed people. Hey you, where do you think you're going? I'm here to see your boss, so do your job. What did you just say, you freak? Well, we tried being polite. Kick him in the balls, honey. It'd be my pleasure, uh, sweetie chops. Dakota. Yeah, <laughs> my pleasure, Miss Dakota. Maybe you can kick me in the balls, but not him. I gelded him myself, like an ox. You can't imagine the kind of strength that gives. He could split your chest with a single headbutt. And anyone else who gets in your way, Mr. Burke. Ah, you got one of those uppity negroes, I see. Uh, if he's like that with me, think what he'd do with you. What the fuck? Who the hell do you think you are? I'm Osmond Burke, and I have an appointment with your boss. You're Burke? Why didn't you say so before? Come on in. Okay, so you don't have to go along with his racism, you can justify him and be like, listen, jackass. That's really disturbing to think if, like, in this alternate reality, like, black folks have it worse. And are still, like, like slaves, maybe. I don't know. If Milton's a slave, that is really messed up. Super, super, super messed up. 
Yeah, this is like a weird sort of alternate reality. Whoa, what is that thing? You really want to know? Better off not asking. Doc 42. In a lot of uh, games, mystery and otherwise, you'll see the number 42 as well as the number it's 23. To be here. Where's the ship? Looking for someone. We arranged to meet Nikolai Ivankov at berth 42, but it looks like the ship isn't moored here. Has she set sail? It isn't moored? <laughs> Maybe she sunk to the bottom of the ocean. It'd be awesome if the submarine had a giant head. On World War II? That's why the Hindenburg is a thing. The Hindenburg was a Nazi uh, airship. People may not remember that. It was before World War II. So. Oh, no bobbleheads here. So we are going to maybe skip past this now. This is pretty short and it's cool. Oh, I really wish that these were bobbleheads. But anyway, we are going to uh, let the credits play through because there is a sequence to play after the credits. My butt's on fire. So, maybe the little girl you play at the beginning and to the end of the game isn't Capone's? Was granddaughter because he didn't say it, it was Alice. It was a different name. I just don't think so. Yeah, it's quite a cool little tableau there. Definitely think it's a fun game. It's it's corny. It's kind of short. Um, even for, you know, it's, I think it's less than two hours for one episode. Not as much gameplay as, like, a Life is Strange or even a Telltale game. A Telltale episode. So, I'm thinking that perhaps, uh oh it's not the end credits yet. I'll wait for that. This seems going to be weird with the bob bubble heads. Oh! Bubble! You know that we punish children who behave badly, don't you? <laughs> oh. Yesterday it was Juliet who behaved badly. Do you remember? Uh huh. She hit Junior so she would finish ahead of him in the morning race. Do you know what we did to her? Morning race. Don't worry. 
You'll find out soon enough. Which do you prefer? The doll or the plush toy? So last time we chose the plush toy. Well, she's a doll this time. Let's see if they bring out a girl. No, it's, it's going to be that same boy. Two days ago, Mickey bit Tom so he could take his food. Do you know what we did with him? I bet they bit him. Bruno says you killed him. Bruno says many things. Which do you prefer, blonde hair or brown? Last time I chose brown. And today, you tried to escape. Do you know what the difference is? No. Juliet and Mickey hurt their friends so that we would not punish them. You tried to escape, but you did not harm your friends. On the contrary, you tried to help Bruno, putting your own life in danger. Very few children would do that. We are going <coughs> to punish you. <laughs> but in a different way than Juliet and Mickey. Bruno, on the other hand, did something very similar to them. He betrayed you to avoid being punished. I'm sorry. Which of these two drawings do you like best? So last time I chose the right one, I think. I'm I think sorry. this is just... Is choosing which hand to chop off. I don't know if those decisions really make a difference. So, I wonder if it's going to show my choices because we had two playthroughs. Is she here? My father asked you to take care of me. Is this how you respect a dead man's wishes? Screw everything I said. He's Al Capone. He may not have much left. But he'll have something. Life's full of little twists and turns, huh? Okay. <coughs> Guess they haven't rendered that episode yet. I have no idea when the second episode's coming out. But anyway, I wonder if it's gonna how it's gonna remember my choices, because I mean choices completely different this time. First time I chose to be nice, this time I chose to be harsh. Okay, um, you got mad after the taunting, you remain calm after the taunting. I remain calm the first time. Uh, first time I asked him to relinquish his fortune, this time I demanded him exile from the country. I stayed sober this time because I thought it would affect Delphine. Uh, I'm sure I was trying to romance her. So, um, I think it, it said I was sensitive to Delphine this time. Previous time, it said I was crude to Delphine, but I really wasn't. I, I just said, oh, I gotta go do something with Milton. And she got mad and started out, but this time, that qualifies as being sensitive. Um, anyway, so like I said, this will be a very, very short episode. That was the Bubbleheads. It doesn't look like we've unlocked anything else under the achievement, other than the achievement for 100% completion on all clues and objects in the game. So, what are the extras? Yep, credits and Bubblehead mode. So, I just briefly wanted to talk about the idea that maybe this is an alternate universe in which the Nazis won World War II. Um, thing, key things seem different. It, I think we've already established that it's sometime in the 1950s um, from a date that we saw somewhere. I can't remember exactly if it was one of the papers or whatever, or in our clues, um, 
So that definitely would have been after World War II. I don't see any overt Nazi presence. Well, I guess all the red, white, and black is, you know, kind of indicative of the Nazi aesthetic um, and iconography. And then the presence of the Hindenburg, again, the fact that that airship did not have the disaster in Lyndhurst, New Jersey, um, before World War II, um, or at least before the U.S. was involved in World War II. We were not at war with them. Uh, Hindenburg was just chilling over in the United States, and it was a official state, like, Nazi ship. It had, like, Nazi symbols on it and stuff. Um, <clears throat> but that was normal back then. So, um, I'm just wondering if maybe in this world, the fact that technology seems kind of different, the social status seems kind of different, after the U.S. won uh, World War II, things became better for African Americans in the United States. Um, for a while, you know, uh, African Americans went to war in World War II and were, you know, greatly appreciated troops and sort of came back with um, good experience and, you know, solid money and stuff like that after World War II and saw success after World War II. Um, whereas in this game, it seems like. Uh, maybe there the fact that the main character mentions that he may have gelded or you know castrated his servants it, it seems much more like uh, some sort of negative servant not like a higher help or something like that I don't really understand what's going on with that so I thought maybe you know if the Nazis had won World War II uh, you know they may not have chosen to directly uh, you know, occupy North America, they would have just sort of instilled their way of life over here. And, you know, their way of life included the fact that they thought that um, African American, not African American people, African people were uh, inferior race um, and should not be afforded the same status and rights as people as. Uh, was the attitude in America in the early days. Um, you know, certainly isn't the dominant opinion now. Uh, I don't think at all, but uh, there certainly are plenty of people out there who do believe stuff like that still. Um, but anyway, the fact that uh, the way the Nazis treated uh, anybody who wasn't Aryans basically purebred Western Europeans, Nordics, um, you know, they treated the other people, even like Eastern Europeans, as if they were like sub-races um, that did not deserve the same respect and rights as other people. So that's just my guess of a theory of what might be going on in this crazy game, why there's this kind of vague Nazi feel without being straight out and showing it. Uh, some of the background characters, the creepy guys with the hats and the glasses sort of everywhere, they seem kind of Nazi-ish. Um, the Hindenburg uh, being a central part of the game and the way the African American characters are treated, especially in that last scene, um, you know, leads me just to possibly hypothesize that in future episodes we're going to find out this is some deal where the Nazis in Germany won World War II. Um, those are my musings on blues and bullets with bubble heads. Uh, you know, it didn't all become clear until I saw the giant heads. You know, that's helped me formulate my theory. Um, so that is the end of this series until a new episode of Blues and Bullets comes out. No idea when that is. We will do a Let's Play with Squirt Reynolds and then probably do a bubblehead of that one too and spout off more inane uh, theories and conspiracies. That's all for now. Spinning Mantis out.
Namaste.